This is a study on the ST Microelectronics 32-bit Cortex M3 powered MCU STM32F101. Welcome to the training module on the STM32 MCU. This module introduces the recently expanded 32-bit Cortex M3 powered Flash MCU family, including architecture, technical specification, benefits over existing MCUs, and development tool support. The STM32F101 XB and the STM32F101 X8 medium density access line family incorporates the high performance ARM Cortex M3 32 bit RISC core operating at 36 megahertz frequency. High speed embedded memories flash memory up to 128 K bytes and static RAM up to up to 16 K bytes and an extensive range of enhanced peripherals and IOs connected to two APB buses. All devices offer standard communication interfaces. Two I squared C's, two SPIs, and up to three USARTs, one 12 bit analog to digital converter, and three general purpose 16 bit timers. The ARM Cortex M3 processor is the latest generation of ARM processors for embedded systems. It has been developed to provide a low-cost platform that meets the needs of MCU implementation with a reduced pin count and low power consumption while delivering outstanding computational performance and advanced system response to interrupts. The ARM Cortex M3 32-bit RISC processor features exceptional code efficiency delivering the high performance expected from an ARM core in the memory size usually associated with 8 and 16 bit devices. The STM32F101XX medium density access line family has an embedded ARM core. It is therefore compatible with all ARM tools and software. The STM32 is an optimal choice to support many applications with the same platform. In standby mode, current consumption is as low as 2 microamps typical with the reset circuitry active. Finally, its 2 volt to 3.6 volt power supply enables its use for battery operated applications. It can be used in various application fields like industrial, building and security, appliances like motor drive and application control, consumer application like PC peripherals, gaming, digital cameras, etc. Here we show a few key benefits of the STM32. The ARM Cortex M3 processor is the first core that ARM has developed specifically for embedded microcontrollers. It has single cycle multiply and hardware division, making it excellent for applications requiring computational performance, and also it has the ability to manipulate IOs and RAM at the bit level. Another innovation with the Cortex M3 core is the Thumb 2 instruction set, which gives 32 bit performance with 16 bit code density. The Cortex M3 is the latest generation of ARM processors for embedded systems. It has been developed to provide a low cost platform that meets the needs of MCU implementation with a reduced pin count and low power consumption while delivering outstanding computational performance and advanced system response to interrupts. ST has a complete and fully compatible family of 48 devices from 32K byte to 512K byte of flash and they are in packages ranging from 36QFN to 144LQFP or BGA. The two product line performance and access are each available in all memory and package options. The STM32F101XX is a complete family whose members are fully pin-to-pin -pin software and feature compatible. 
the STM32F101 X4 and STM32F101 X6 are referred to as low density devices. The STM32F108 X8 and the STM32F101 XB are referred to as medium density devices. And the STM32F101 XC and STM32F101 XD and STM32F101 XE are referred to as high density devices. Here we explain the block diagram of the STM32F 10X device. The STM32 is built around the industry standard ARM 32-bit RISC architecture. The Cortex-M3 is the latest core from ARM. The advanced architectural features of the Cortex-M3 processor reduce memory size while delivering industry-leading performance in a small, power-efficient RISC core. It thus provides an ideal platform for the migration of many different applications around the world from legacy devices to the 32-bit microcontroller world. The STM32 is composed of the Cortex core, which is connected to the flash memory by the dedicated instruction bus. The Cortex data and system buses are connected to a matrix of ARM Advanced High Speed Buses, AHB. The internal static RAM is connected directly to the AHB bus matrix, as is the DMA unit. The peripherals are located on two ARM Advanced Peripheral Buses, APB. Each of the APB buses is bridged onto the AHB bus matrix. The AHB bus matrix is clocked at the same speed as the Cortex core. However, the AHB buses have separate prescalers and may be clocked at slower speeds to conserve power. It is important to note that the APB2 can run at the full 72 MHz, while the APB1 is limited to 36 MHz. Here we show the memory layout of the STM32 device. It has three sections, user flash, system memory, little information block, program memory, data memory, registers, and I.O. ports are organized within the same linear 4 gigabyte address space. The addressable memory space is divided into eight main blocks, each of 512 megabytes. The device has an integrated power on reset circuitry that allows proper operation starting from down to 2 volts. The device remains in reset mode when VDD slash VDDA is below a specified threshold, VPOR slash PDR, without the need for an external reset circuit. For more details concerning the power on, power down reset threshold, the device requires a 2 to 3.6 volt operating voltage, VDD. An embedded regulator is used to supply the internal 1.8 volt digital power. Each I.O. port is freely programmable. However, the I.O. port registers have to be accessed as 32-bit words. During and just after reset, the I.O. ports are configured in input floating mode. There is no need for the software to disable interrupts when programming the GPO at bit level. It is possible to modify only one or several bits in a single atomic write access. This is achieved by programming to 1 the bit set reset register or for reset only. Here we give information about how interrupt and events are handled by the ARM Cortex STM32. The NVIC and the processor core interface are closely coupled, which enables low latency interrupt processing and efficient processing of late arriving interrupts. All interrupts, including the core exceptions, are managed by the NVIC. 
The external interrupt event controller consists of up to 19 edge detectors for generating event slash interrupt requests. Each input line can be independently configured to select the type, pulse or pending, and the corresponding trigger event, rising or falling, or both. Each line can also be masked independently. A pending register maintains the status line of the interrupt requests. Direct Memory Access DMA is used in order to provide high-speed data transfer between peripherals and memory as well as memory to memory. Data can be quickly moved by DMA without any CPU actions. This keeps CPU resources free for other operations. The two DMA controllers have 12 channels in total, 7 for DMA1 and 5 for DMA2, each dedicated to managing memory access requests from one or more peripherals. It has an arbiter for handling the priority between DMA requests. Each of the 12 channels is connected to dedicated hardware DMA requests. Software trigger is also supported on each channel. This configuration is done by software. The 12-bit ADC is a successive approximation analog to digital converter. It has up to 18 multiplex channels, allowing it to measure signals from 16 external and two internal sources. A to D conversion of the various channels can be performed in single, continuous, scan, or discontinuous mode. The result of the ADC is stored in a left-aligned or right-aligned 16-bit data register. The analog watchdog feature allows the application to detect if the input voltage goes outside the user-defined high or low thresholds. Interrupt generation at end of conversion, end of injected conversion, and analog watchdog event. Scan mode for automatic conversion of channel 0 to channel N. It also has channel by channel programmable sampling time. ADC conversion time varies from 1.17 microseconds at 72 megahertz and 1.55 microseconds at 36 megahertz. 1.2 microseconds at 48 megahertz. ADC supply requirements are 2.4 volts to 3.6 volts and ADC input range is V between VREF minus and VREF plus. The DAC module is a 12-bit voltage output digital to analog converter. The DAC can be configured in 8 or 12-bit mode and may be used in conjunction with the DMA controller. In 12-bit mode, the data could be left or right aligned. The DAC has two output channels, each with its own converter. In dual DAC channel mode, conversions can be done independently or simultaneously when both channels are grouped together for synchronous update operation. An input reference pin, VREF Plus, is available for better resolution. The Universal Synchronous Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter, USART, offers a flexible means of full duplex data exchange with external equipment requiring an industry standard NRZ asynchronous serial data format. The USART offers a very wide range of baud rates using a fractional baud rate generator. It supports synchronous one-way communication and half-duplex single-wire communication. It also supports the LIN local interconnection network. Smart Card Protocol and IRDA Infrared Data Association SIRENDEC specifications and modem operations. CTS slash RTS. It allows multi-processor communication. High-speed data communication is possible by using the DMA for multi-buffer configuration. I2C bus interface serves as an interface between the microcontroller 
and the Serial I squared C bus. It provides multi master capability and controls all I squared C bus specific sequencing, protocol, arbitration, and timing. It supports standard and fast speed modes. It also has SMB bus 2.0 compatible. It may be used for a variety of purposes, including CRC generation and verification. SMB bus, system management bus, and PM bus, power management bus. Depending on specific device implementation, DMA capability can be available for reduced CPU overload. The basic extended CAN peripheral, named BX CAN, interfaces the CAN network. It supports the CAN protocols version 2.0 A and B. It has been designed to manage a high number of incoming messages efficiently with a minimum CPU load. It also meets the priority requirements for transmit messages. For safety critical applications, the CAN controller provides all hardware functions for supporting the CAN time triggered communication option. The USB peripheral implements an interface between a full speed USB 2.0 bus and the APB1 bus. USB suspend slash resume are supported which allows to stop the device clocks for low power consumption. USB specification version 2.0 full speed compliant configurable number of endpoints from 1 to 8 cyclic redundancy check CRC generation slash checking, non-return to zero level inverted, NRZI encoding slash decoding, and bit stuffing. ISO synchronous transfer support, duffel, double buffered bulk ISO synchronous endpoint support, USB suspend slash resume operations, frame locked clock pulse generation. I2S is also a synchronous serial communication interface with a three pin protocol. It can address four different audio standards including the I2S Philips standard, the MSB and LSB justified standards, and the PCM standard. It can operate in slave or master mode with half duplex communication. Master clock may be provided by the interface to an external slave component when the I2S is configured as the communication master. The SPI could function as an audio I2S interface when the I2S capability is enabled by setting the IS2 mod bit in the SPI configuration register. This interface uses almost the same pins, flags, and interrupts as the SPI. The I2S shares three common pins with the SPI. The SD serial data mapped on the MOSI pin to transmit or receive two time multiplex data channels. The WS word select which is mapped to the NSS pin. It is the data control signal output in master mode and input in the slave mode. And the CK serial clock which is mapped to the SCK pin. It is the serial clock output in master mode and serial clock input in slave mode. An additional pin can be used when a master clock output is needed for some external audio devices. MCK master clock is used when the I2S is configured in master mode. To output this additional clock generated a pre-configured frequency rate equal to 256 times FS, where FS is the audio sampling frequency. For fast communication between integrated circuits, the STM32 provides two SPI peripherals which can provide full duplex communication at rates up to 18 megahertz. It is important to note that one SPI peripheral is located on the APB2 high speed peripheral bus which can run at speeds up to 72 megahertz. 
The second is on the low speed APB1, which can run at speeds up to 37 MHz. Each SPI peripheral has programmable clock polarity and phase, and the data can be transmitted as 8 or 16 bit words MSB first or LSB first. This allows each SPI peripheral to be configured as a master or slave, which can communicate with any other SPI device available. The Serial Peripheral Interface, SPI, allows half or full duplex synchronous serial communication with external devices. The interface can be configured as the master, and in this case it provides the communication clock, SCK, to the external slave device. The interface is also capable of operating in multi-master configuration. It may be used for a variety of processes, including simplex synchronous transfers on two lines with a possible bidirectional data line or reliable communication using CRC checking. ST has worked with a range of third-party vendors including IAR, KEIL, Hitex, and Resonance, who have ST32 development kits. Each kit includes an evaluation target board, USB to JTAG adapter, and evaluation software version of IDE compiler combinations. The Hitex Performance Stick is a very low cost evaluation tool for the STM32. It provides an unlimited development environment based on the high top debugger and the GCC compiler. For full product development, the same IDE and compiler are available for the Hitex Tentino JTAG debugger. The STM32F10XX is built around a Cortex M3 core, which contains hardware extensions for advanced debugging features. The debugging extensions allow the core to be stopped either on a given instruction fetch breakpoint or data access watch point. When stopped, the core's internal state and the system's external state may be examined. Once examination is complete, the core and system may be restored and program execution resumed. The debug features are used by the debugger host when connecting to and debugging the STM32F 10XXX MCU. Two interfaces for debug are available, serial wire and JTAG debug port. 